So tonight's class on our little run of classes about yoga for healthy body systems. We're focusing tonight on, on muscles. And the idea is just to give you a little few ideas about the muscular system and feel some of that in, in the practices that we do. And just think a little bit about what muscles do for us and, and how they work with, with the yoga practice. I've always said that strength should be 50% of a yoga practice in terms of the physical practice, um, not just flexibility. People tend to think about yoga as just being about flexibility, but the strength is really, really important. And if you if you maintain good a good level of an appropriate level of strength for you, whatever stage of life you're at, the level of fitness, um, and you just sort of feel stronger, um, that can ripple out into lots of other beneficial effects um, in terms of mental well-being and, and feelings of self-worth and things like that. Um, but it also helps to improve posture. And we're going to think about muscles in uh, in the three layers as they present in the body. So the, the superficial layer is, is some of the big muscles you, you've heard of, the hamstrings and your quads and your bicep and tricep. And they're, they're near the surface of the body, just under the skin. You can feel them easily. And as they contract and relax, they bring about movement around joints. But you also have um, layers. So going from superficial to deep and some in the in the midway between superficial and deep. And um, they play uh, other interesting roles. So the deep ones tend to be really important in terms of core strength and posture. And we'll investigate uh, a little bit of that when we um, get to some of the practices we're doing tonight. And, and some of the muscles are kind of selfless servants, really. So they just exist there to, to stabilize things or to, to stabilize joints, such as you've got a load of muscles around your shoulder, which is very, very mobile joint. You can, as we do every week, you can move it in all sorts of directions. But if you want to pick up a heavy load, um, you don't want it to move around. So all the muscles around your shoulder, joint and collarbone contract and hold this steady so that those big superficial muscles can do, do their job. Um, and some just work synergistically, so um, they will uh, assist or play a supporting role with, with a bigger muscle. So an example of that is um, you, you've got a little, little muscle in your uh, rotator cuff here that um, just contracts a little and begins the movement of the arm away from the body. And then the big deltoid muscle that is on top of the shoulder takes over. So that is working synergistically to support movement. And then briefly, because the skeletal muscles are pretty much the ones we'll be working with because they're under our voluntary control, but you've got lots of involuntary muscles as well. And um, all through your digestive system, you've got smooth muscle um, contracting and relaxing that peristaltic action and moving food and things through your body. Uh, as, as one of my yoga teachers said a long time ago, like most animals, we're, we're a mouth at, we're, we're a complex tube with a mouth at one end and a bum at the other. And, um, uh, and, and we take in food at one end and absorb the nutrients and expel what we need out of the other. And those smooth muscles are part of that system. And then, and then finally, you know, the greatest muscle in the world, in everybody's body, if you haven't guessed it already, of course, is, is the heart. So all these other muscles get tired when we use them, we get lactic acid building up, we get all sorts of problems. You can tear them and rip them. And although you can get heart problems, um, pretty much this muscle beats from the day you're born and carries on till the end of your life. Uh, and that is an extraordinary, an extraordinary thing. And, and the structure of that muscle is, is unique uh, in, in terms of the, the rest of the body and the way it doesn't, it doesn't tire. So um, the, the other thing that muscles do is, is keep us warm and generate a lot of heat. So as we use them and that process of using up the oxygen and using ATP energy molecules to power them, um, the byproduct is a, lot, is a lot of heat. 
So another benefit of engaging with muscles in yoga is that you create quite a lot of heat in the body and heat is very supportive of flexibility. It helps to soften not only muscles, but the connective tissue around them. So you're much less likely to injure yourself if you have a lot of heat in the body from using your muscles, which is why when people do sport and they're not warmed up or, or on a cold day, or I bet everybody has experienced at one time or another going to a yoga class in a cold village hall in winter time and the pace of the class is just too slow and you just never ever feel feel warmed up. I taught a class once with a woolly hat on, a scarf and a coat uh, because it was sub-zero and the heating had broken in the church hall and uh, I just abandoned my yoga plan and we did all sorts of jumping around and <laughs> non-yogic things to um, get that initial heat in the body. So muscles are really important and we're going to work with them um, throughout our practice and we'll even work with them in our initial centering and breath work. So I invite you just to find a comfortable position in your chair or on the mat, just to give the shoulders a little roll back and release them down, extend and lengthen the back of the neck. Feel as if you're just trying to stretch the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. And at the same time, feeling fully grounded in your chair through the hips and down to the ground through the soles of the feet or if you're sitting cross-legged through the outside of the legs and feet. With your eyes closed or downcast, take a moment to notice how you're feeling this evening. And take a moment to reflect on your own sense of your muscular system, whether you, whether you feel that the muscles of your body are being well used, or that you're active, that you have sufficient strength, or whether you feel it's been perhaps difficult to exercise or you've just um, been a mobile for a while and you feel that that strength has ebbed away a little bit and it's something you would like to to rebuild. And try not to have a judgment on that because as soon as we start to set goals and expectations um, it no longer becomes an unfolding process of body-mind exploration. It becomes a, a goal-driven activity and we don't we don't really want that. But we do need to reflect on where we are right now. And then begin to focus on your breath, breathing in and out through the nose unless the nose is blocked. And keeping the breathing very light and subtle, just as if you are drawing in the perfume of a lovely summer rose. and allow your exhale to be both effortless, but also just a little, a little lengthened compared with the inhalation. Subtle, slow, but deep inhalation down into the diaphragm and easy, effortless exhalation. you feel your posture slumping a little bit, just sit a little taller because just that process of lengthening up through the centre of the body is going to begin to engage a little bit of your postural muscles, both in the pelvic floor and in the lower abdominals. And we want that subtle engagement of reaching up for the next part of the practice, where you can start, if you like, with the palms on the abdomen and we're going to extend that exhale into a contraction, into a drawing in of the abdominal muscles, feeling that you're squeezing the abdomen in, squeezing those soft tissues back towards the lower back. And as you do that, it will push the diaphragm up a little bit higher than usual, and that will expel 
just a little bit more air than usual. Which means when you inhale, you really need to let the belly go soft behind the hands. Do that easy, full, subtle in breath. And then breathing out. And just as you get to the end of the exhale, engage, draw in and feel that contraction through the palms of the hands. Let's do three more breaths like that at your own pace. Occasionally people have a, a reason not to work strongly with their abdominal muscles, any kind of medical reason, or simply that you, you've eaten a little bit close to class. So if, if you're falling into that category, you can do quite a subtle contraction here and instead feel that you are just engaging the glutes or even better still, feeling as if you're pulling the pelvic floor up into the body. And that will slightly shift the focus of contraction, but it will still um, activate this area of the deep muscles of the core of the body. And then just as a, a little experiment, at the end of the next exhale, instead of letting the belly go soft, just keep about 25% of the contraction here. So feel as if this area of the pelvis, the pelvic floor will be lifting slightly, these lower abdominals, the deep muscles, their four layers in, will be drawing in slightly. And yet you have softness from the tummy button upwards so that your breath is still flowing and smooth. If we overdid that contraction, really pulled it in, we'd find that we wouldn't be able to breathe, the diaphragm wouldn't be able to move, everything would become very breathy and then the top of the chest. But this very low, subtle drawing in creates this wonderful sense of support for the lower back a sense of stillness at the center of our body. And we find that we can breathe here and experience both the softness, the subtlety of our breath, but also a, a real sense of a deep and stabilizing strength at the center of our body. And then after the next exhale, if you've been working with your eyes closed, blinking, open the eyes and bring the palms together in front of the heart. And what we're gonna do is keep these shoulders back and relaxed um, we're just going to squeeze the palms together at an appropriate um, amount of force for you. So you could be pressing very hard or really quite subtly. Both of them will activate the muscles that we are trying to activate. So breathing in and out through the nose, pressing the palms. And we're going to try and keep constant pressure. So a little, little bit of a theme developing. We kept it drawn in and stable down here and we're keeping a sustainable pressing of the palms here and you know if you had a third arm you'd feel to um, just press the front of the chest here and feel that all the muscles of the pectoralis major and minor are engaged and that you're strengthening this part of the chest and because we're keeping the shoulders back and down we're strengthening these muscles, but in a, a helpful position. Quite often you get to see people exercising these muscles in the gym with a very rounded back and they're just shortening them and that will make them stand out more, but it's going to bring the shoulders and round the back. We don't want that. So we're keeping everything up and just squeezing. And then relax for a second. Let the arms hang, give the shoulders a shrug. We can do that once more. So just reflect on how that was for you. And if you, if your breath was disturbed or you felt any shaking in the body, then just ease back a little bit off the, off the contraction accelerator 
and, and press a little more gently. And if you're doing fine and you're building the strength there, then uh, just go again or even increase it slightly for this second round. And at the end of the next exhale, let the arms hang again. Now, some of these practices we're going to do tonight, because we're deliberately engaging more muscles than we might normally do, um, you may find that your breath rate just accelerates a little bit, and that's absolutely fine. You're, you're burning up more, more oxygen, using more energy, so your, your rate of respiration will go up. So what we'll do now just continue this investigation a little bit longer using a belt. So wrapping the belt or whatever you're using once around the hands and we're going to bring it up you know just about the same height that we had for the hands together but this time we're going to begin to stretch the belt and as you do that you will feel the tops of the shoulders, the backs of the shoulders, the rhomboids, the latissimus dorsi, lots of back muscles. And it, again, if you had a spare third arm, you'd find that the front of the chest has gone soft. So we've moved the contraction completely from the front of the body to the back of the body. And again, you might be just stretching this belt really quite subtly if, if you need to slowly build up your strength. But if you're really strong, you, know, you can really, really put some tension in there as long as you can still breathe in a slow, steady, controlled way. And then release. Let's give the shoulders a shrug. That's a, a little more testing for the shoulders. So we'll just give ourselves slightly longer to recover. And again, I mean, I... I got into the anatomy of yoga through a fascination with with muscle actions and um, I've even written silly silly plays about the different aspects that are involved in a muscle contraction that I sometimes get my my students to um, read out the, ver the various roles um, and I mean this muscle here the the deltoid that wraps over the shoulder that we're using we're using the top of it and the back of it so even within one muscle it has the ability just for one half of it to contract. And that means that this muscle can lift the arms up, can lift the arms up and forward, that's the middle and the front. It can lift the arms forward and back, that's the middle and the back. And when we're doing this stretch, if you, again, if you had that third arm and you felt it, you'd really feel quite a lot of softness at the front of that muscle and the contraction getting bigger and bigger as we move to the back. I think a sense, a sense of wonderment at the body is always appropriate and um, it goes for all the systems. Um, but perhaps I feel, I feel the love a little bit more for the, for the skeletal muscles. So here we are, we're stretching our belt again. We're keeping the shoulders back and down. We're really working into those shoulders. We're still breathing steadily. And the great thing about, I said earlier that you know, the skeletal muscles are under our conscious control, but we're consciously deciding to stretch the belt. And so we're, we're engaging those muscles, but we didn't tell our core to engage. But as you're stretching that belt, these core muscles are drawing in and they're just stabilizing the midline, the spine of the body, so that you can do this stretch without being pulled around by, by the arms. And then release once more, let the arms hang, give the shoulders a lift and roll. And then I'm hoping that you are experiencing a little bit of heat. Um, and when we focus on the core muscles, when we focus on a little bit of resistance stretching, as we've just done, 
we can create quite, quite a lot of heat that feels as if surely we must have done quite a lot of practice, but we haven't really done anything yet. So, um, so again, the benef the benefit of creating strength and the benefit of the heat that comes from those contractions. So let's let's bring the palms back together again. And we'll just do that movement and see how it feels. Inhale, take the arms wide apart. Exhale, bring the palms together. And perhaps the, the heat that we've created in those muscles around the shoulders is helping this movement feel a little more easy, a little more silky than it might feel on other weeks when we go straight into this as our opening practice. Let's check in with the second one, let the arms hang with the palms facing outwards and breathing in, taking the arms as high as is comfortable for you, but keeping the shoulders down, no shoulders up to the ears, dropping them away, and then exhaling, turning the palms, floating the arms down, end of the exhale, let them hang and soften. Breathing in, turn the palms, float the arms up. Let your breath cue the body. And then do that twice more following your own breath. Take hold of the bell, take it nice and wide. You can always go narrow if you need to. What we've been doing quite a lot recently, let the arms hang, belt is slack, and then breathing in, bring the arms up, and just taking the bell as comfortable uh, as you can get it. I'm having to go wider, and either coming back down on the exhale to the front. If you have the shoulder mobility and there's no pain in those joints, then release behind and then inhale, arms are coming back up, exhale, softening forwards. And again, I just wonder if this feels for any of you just a little a little easier because of the the warmth and heat that you've created in your shoulder muscles which allows them to move a little more freely although if you do have discomfort in the shoulder joint itself that is not not going to be fixed by warming up the muscles lovely and this is our last one And then we're going to release the belt down for a moment. We're going to come in just to a little bit of a forward bend. So we're going to breathe in, draw the elbows and the palms back, cactus arms, and then exhale, take the hands onto the thighs and come forward on a long exhale, tucking the chin in, letting the crown of the head hang forward with no tension in the neck at the end of that exhale. When you're ready to come up, breathe in, bring the back of the neck back in line with the rest of the spine, come up with a flat back. Bring the arms up, draw the shoulders back. Exhale. And once more. And then bringing the palms together. We always do this uh, warm up twist to bring some mobility to the spine. 
So breathing in, thinking about making your spine as long as you can, lifting that crown of the head, and then exhaling, turning the shoulders to the right and rotating the head in the opposite direction to the left. But without leaning at all, you still have that midline from the crown of the head down to the center of the pelvis. Each time you breathe in, just work at your own pace, come back to center and then exhale. Just get into a flow following your own breath. Although we do this one every week to mobilize the spine, as I was saying, we're also additionally doing it this week because there are some very deep spinal muscles called the rotators, which are really tiny muscles that attach one vertebra to the other, which you are now working in and out of this twist. And again, because they're right in the center of the body, running uh, the length of the spine, as we work them, we're creating heat there. And that inner body heat will begin to make us feel warm. It will radiate out to the superficial muscles. It will give us uh, a sense of practice where the, the heat is coming from, from within and radiating out, and that's always always a good thing. Just do one more to the right, one more to the left. And when you finish your last one, coming into a forward bend that we will just hold a little bit longer. Once you're in position, you can either use the arms to support the body. Uh, that's necessary if you need to keep the head level with the heart for any cardiovascular glaucoma or other medical reasons. If you want to let the arms hang and go a little bit deeper, just let the crown of the head hang forward. It's still quite a mild inversion and it does feel, it does feel nice and you will experience slightly heightened sense of the lower back and the whole of the spine lengthening away from the pelvis. Lovely, and then lifting the head, breathing in, coming out with a flat back. Give the shoulders a roll, give the arms a shake. And if you are staying in the chair, just stay in the chair. And if you are coming down to the mat, then come down to the mat now. Draw the knees in over the chest. Take a little rock from side to side, as we usually do, just begin to ease out the back. So it's a, like a subtle, a subtle version of the twisting posture. But if you're on the mat, you put your spine out of gravity, it's just a little, a little easier on the body. And if you're in the chair, we are holding the sides of the chair and circling the upper body around. And this engages quite a lot of core muscles that we've already activated. And then change the direction. Lovely. So um, what we'll do now as our first practice is actually pick up and continue working with these same abdominal muscles, but in this different relationship to gravity. So tuck the tailbone under, the lower back is flat on the floor. And as you breathe in, really soften the belly, fill the lungs completely with breath. And then as you breathe out, we're gonna draw the navel down towards the spine. And this time we have that added benefit of feeling the lower back being pressed down into the mat. Breathing in, soft belly, exhale, draw the navel in. And again, just as we said earlier, if you've got 
any reason not to work these tummy muscles strongly. Focus a little bit more on doing a subtle drawing in of the abdomen and focus more on lifting the pelvic floor. Excellent. And then we're going to go into a slightly more dynamic stretch now. So for those of you working on the mat, you're going to breathe in, take the arms up into the air and take the arms overhead if you can. And then again, if you want to, straighten the legs. And then you're coming into a very active stretch here, breathing in and out as you stretch and lengthen the body. And if you're doing this in the chair, you're going to do exactly the same, but instead of stretching the legs out, you're going to press the soles of the feet down into the floor as you work. Now, if you're working in a chair, just allow the arms every two or three breaths because they will get tired. And if you're working on the mat, so you can just keep that going for a little bit longer. So if it gets too tiring, just rest and go floppy for a moment. But it would be better if you can just maybe give the left side of the body a rest and just stretch through the right and then give the right side of the body a rest, stretch through the left. And as you're breathing and stretching, spread the fingers, spread the palms, and slowly as you breathe, pull the toes back and point the toes away. So do that very slowly. And the idea is to engage as many muscles of the body as possible. So when we're in a stretched out position, we're really working um, quite purposefully, uh, we can activate a great number of muscles, which is good, good for the skeletal system. It will create a lot of heat and it will also begin to work on many muscles at the same time. So just one more breath if you're still working actively and then we're going to go into five breaths of softness. So just let your arms come back beside the body if you're lying on the mat or rest on the thighs if you're in the chair. And maybe close the eyes, perhaps noticing a slightly elevated heart rate. I hope noticing a little bit of heat in the body, really linking that sense of heat to the activation of your muscles both now superficial and deep. Just enjoy a moment of rest. Very good. And then if you're lying on the mat, bend the knees and come back into this semi-supine position. Just slide out the cushion or blanket that you've had under your head. Tuck the chin in. Just see where, where the weight is. So if you still feel that there's weight going into the back of the head and the neck in this position, then actually the best thing to do is to move that blanket down so that it is under the shoulders and not under the head. So we're going to be doing this, we're going to be lifting the pelvis and we want the feet and the shoulders to be the weight bearing parts of the body. So before you lift the pelvis, place the hands on the belly and exhale, come into that sort of 30% contraction, drawing the tummy in. Find your breath there. Release the hands down onto the mat. And when you're ready, inhale, lift. And we're gonna hold this position. And when you've had enough, you're gonna 
On an exhale, you're going to roll the spine down and draw the knees in over the chest. Those working in the chest, slide the hands back. If you've got the kind of chair you can hold on to, draw the shoulders back to create the same spinal position and then press through the feet to activate the quad muscles, which those on the mat are working hard at this point. And if you want to make it a little stronger, if you're working in a chair, you can hover the sole of one of the feet and every two or three breaths, lift the other foot and swap. So let's, let's roll the spine down on the next exhale, if you're still in the lifted position. Let's bring the knees in and take a moment to notice how you're feeling. And then we're going to do one more round. So find your starting position again. Tummy muscles in, lower back flat on the mat, arms beside the body. Breathing in, coming up. And if you want to, you can come a little bit higher this time. But we're keeping the tummy in, really focusing on working through the upper back, lifting the breastbone, opening that area, pressing the shoulders down into the mat or the blanket. And with those quads engaged, the front of the thighs, slightly internally rotating the thighs so that the feet are nicely aligned and we feel the weight in the big toe joint as well as the heel and the outside of the foot. Again, just hold that for as long as feels good for you before you roll down and hug the knees in. And second round for those in the chair. If the first one was a little bit intense, then keep the feet on the ground to a slightly reduced back bend. But if you are fine, then coming back into the same alternate hovering of the feet. And then everybody releasing from the back bend. If you're on the mat, roll down the spine, hug the knees in. If you're in a chair, just a nice soft fold over the thighs and a little sway of the upper body from side to side. I'm going to do a, a twist now. This practice is going to be a little bit different for those in a chair and working on the mat. I'm going to show you the chair option first. So if you can, you're going to sit sideways on your chair and rotate round and hold the back of the chair, which will take you into a slightly deeper twist than usual because you, you're using your arms as leverage. Now, if you if you um, have any back conditions, be really be really mindful and careful of this, and don't really crank the spine round. Just just ease yourself into a nice full twist, and then what you'll be doing is exhaling, sorry, inhaling, looking. Um, towards the back of the chair and then exhaling, rotating the head as far as you can. So nothing is moving in the upper body in the spinal twist from the neck down. And then we're using the breath to mobilize the neck. For those working on the mat, you're going to use this twist as a strengthening practice. Surprise, surprise. So we will bring the knees in over the chest. And you can take the arms a little bit further away from you and you can have them palms down if you like, because this is all about stability. The knees and feet are together and we're going to start very gently just exhaling to the side, inhaling to the centre, exhaling to the other side, inhaling to the centre. You can turn your head the opposite way to the knees to get that additional rotation going. But what, you, what you we're really gonna do here is begin to gradually take the knees a little bit further, making sure that the shoulders remain easily in their foundation on the mat. As soon as the shoulder starts to lift, 
you've lost the foundation so rein it in a little bit and it's not so much the amount of twist in this one it's all these muscles it's the second and third layer down from the superficial level the internal external oblique muscles that we're really working here to strengthen and they're big muscles so a lot of heat gets released when we do this twisting movement. I'm going to carry on just for a couple more. If you're working in a chair, you'll need to just turn around now so you're twisting the other way and move the head in the same way on the other side. And we're coming to the end of this practice. If you're on the mat and you want to just take the feet down and actually release the knees all the way over into a slightly deeper twist, that will just help to soften the spine and perhaps that heat you've created will help with that. Then feel free to do that just for a couple of breaths and then come back to centre and do the same on the other side. Lovely. And then counterpose by drawing the knees in over the chest if you're on the mat or just that soft fold forward over the knees if you are working from a chair. So we'll come into a cat stretch now, which as usual you can do on all fours on the mat with the hands in front of the shoulders, knees hip width apart, with padding under the knees and we're particularly focusing on the exhale in our cat this week because that's an opportunity to really gather all these abdominal muscles to draw the chin in towards the sternum to really tuck the tailbone under at the back and create space in the lower back and then breathing in is going to be a real softening of the spine allowing the spine just to sink a little deeper between the shoulder blades if you're working from the chair, you're going to be breathing in, sliding the hands up towards the hips, breathing out, sliding the hands away. As usual, any wrist or shoulder issues, bring the forearms up onto the chair. And you can even do this from standing if if kneeling is not going to work for you. Lovely. And then just release out of the pose. If you've been working on all fours, set the hips back towards the heels in pose of the child, or just soften over the thighs if you're working from the chair. Lovely. So our next, our next pose is going to be the lunge. And if you've got a stable chair, chair against the wall, somewhere safe that you can bring your foot up onto, um, this is the best place to do the lunge. It's just more effective in terms of using the weight of the body to open, open the groins. But if you need to do this down on the mat, this is absolutely fine as well. Do pad the, the back knee. So I don't really mind which, which lunge you do. You're going to hold one side for five breaths and then switch to the other side. We're just using this as a, a kind of key, a keystone stretch for um, working, into, working into a back bend. And um, rather than really focusing on strengthening this muscle, this is all about, about stretching. And if you're working 
from a chair. Lunge isn't going to be quite as effective. You can just release one knee out to the side, get a little bit of hip opening and place the leading foot firmly down on the floor, either in front or under the knee, and then work the upper body in and out of that open position with the breath. Inhale, exhale. So if you're still working the right leg, switching to the left leg. And just one or two more breaths. And then if you are working that from standing, then just remain standing. If you've been working the lunge from the floor, take pose of the child. If you're in a chair, sitting quietly for a moment. So we're kind of moving towards the, um, the physical practice climax of the, of the class. Uh, and we just get there through one more stepping stone, which is the downward dog. Now, if you're working from the chair, you're going to work dynamically, both arms and alternate legs. Inhaling and exhaling. And if you are working from the mat, you can either do the traditional dog from the, with the hands on the floor. Done many, many times before. Or if you've just been working from standing, it would make sense to just continue there and do the supported downward dog. So knees bent, spine extending, lengthening out. And we're not doing a lot of contraction here, apart from in these lower abdominal muscles, which as you draw in, will really help you to keep that lovely flat feeling and length, sense of length through the spine. And then releasing from your downward dog. So we're going to, I'm going to demonstrate the standing version of this next, um, next stretch. And this is where we are going to bring back the, the, the strength and the, the use of the contraction to both create heat, but also to um, create a more rapid sense of space in the muscle than we would get from a normal yoga passive stretch. Um, we are going to be holding and elevating the foot onto, onto a chair that needs to be stable. And you may also need a wall or something that you can hold on to. So ideally it'd be something, something like this. Now, if you, if you have hypermobile joints and your knee starts to go the wrong way, then slightly bend the knee, make sure this leg remains straight, pull the toes back. If you're hypermobile, you don't, definitely don't need stretches but you will definitely benefit from the strength. And then what I'm gonna do in this position, which should just feel like a comfortable stretch to this hamstring muscle at the back of the thigh, is to begin to press that right heel into the chair. So sometimes this seems a little bit counterintuitive and people can't quite grasp it. So if the chair wasn't there, my leg would bend. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to contract the hamstring to bend the knee, but the chair is in the way. This is called resistant stretching. So the muscle that we're targeting, the hamstring here is stretched, but then we press the heel and we bring a contraction into it. So the easiest way to fully understand that is just to feel the hamstring with the spare hand. So if you take a moment without pressing the heel and feel the hamstring, it will have a certain amount of softness to it, even though it's being stretched. And then as you begin to press the heel, it develops a lot of tension. So we're building strength in this muscle, we're releasing heat, 
and we are about to stretch it a little bit more. So after pressing the heel for about five breaths, then you relax the pressing and try to go a little bit deeper, take the body forward and go a little bit deeper into the hamstring stretch and enjoy five breaths of that passive stretch. So you're no longer pressing the heel. So to replicate that from the chair, you could use another chair and press down into that if you had one, or you can use your belt and you can come into the stretch position and then try to take the heel down towards the floor um, and use the belt as the resistance rather than rather than a chair. So for those who are standing, I'm just going to suggest that you do that one more time on this right leg. So coming out of the passive stretch and going back into the um, resistance stretch, pressing the heel down, developing the tension in the muscle, breathing steadily, just feeling, feeling that um, work going on in this muscle. And at the end of the fifth breath, no longer pressing the heel and seeing if you can go a little bit deeper into the stretch. And this pretty much usually works for most people most of the time that they feel they were in a stretch, they contracted the muscle and then they were able to release a little bit more. And there's some complex physiological mechanisms going on in that muscle, which enable you to do that. And you are kind of tricking your body into releasing a little bit more flexibility for you to use when you do this. But it's pretty safe, as I say, unless you are tending towards hypermobility. It's also quite hard work <laughs> and you will um, no doubt feel, feel that maybe in the elevated heart rate and slightly more rapid breathing. So after the second second passive stretch, we'll, we'll come out of that. Maybe just give the legs a little shake and the legs can feel quite different. So notice any difference in sensations between the right leg and the left leg. And give yourself a few breaths of rest. And then when you're ready, if you're in the chair using the bell or using the left heel on the chair, supporting your balance with the wall and doing five breaths of resistance stretching through the left leg. Remember you then come into five breaths of passive stretching where you hope to bank a little bit of your bonus flexibility. At the end of those five breaths coming back into pressing the heel resistance stretch. And then softening into our final passive stretch. When you completed that work equally on both legs, coming back into either standing, and just shaking, shaking out the legs, feeling how that is. We're just sitting quietly for a moment, noticing the sensations in both legs, which should be a lot more even now. 
but feeling quite activated and alive. Th these are the, the hamstring stretches that sports people really, really love because um, they tend to have very short hamstrings, particularly if they're footballers or, or rowers or cyclists. Um, and it gives, it gives them some really quick, really rapid flexibility gains. Not, not particularly part of the yoga tradition, but an interesting technique of gaining a little bit more release in a tight muscle uh, when we are exploring how, how our muscles work. So you'll either be standing or you will be sitting in your chair. We'll just make our usual transition now, breathing in, bringing the arms to a comfortable position over the head, palms together, exhale, draw the hands down through the midline of the body. Begin to work the feet, let the toes float up with the arms. Let the toes relax down. Let the heels lift slightly. Exhale, heels down and carry on for a few more rounds at your own pace. working from the chair or from standing. And the next time you raise the heels, make that your last one. I'm going to do uh, three rounds of our sun, sal sun salutations. And the idea here is just to kind of integrate everything. So this has been a bit of a bitty class of activating and strengthening certain groups of muscles, although I hope you feel a kind of whole body result and we've done all, all the movements you'd expect to do taking the spine through its full range of of movement so we'll we'll use the sun salutations just to bring all of that together so breathing in cactus arms open the chest breathing out coming into an easy forward bend inhaling flattening the back Exhale, coming a little deeper. Inhale, coming up with a flat back. Exhale, palms together. Breathing in, reaching up. And exhale, side stretch. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reach up and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And just carry on at your own pace for two more rounds.
when you have completed two rounds, just take a moment standing or sitting. And our last pose before we take the body into a mild inversion is our balance. So if you're working from a chair, using one of the three hand positions for the tree pose, hands in front of the heart, arms wide or palms together above the head, and either just hovering the foot, particularly if you've got sides on the chair, or bringing one foot on top of the other. Similarly, if you are standing, just pick the arm position for you. And we're gonna work for five breaths on one standing leg. And then we'll transition and do the same on the other leg. Release the body if you need to between sides. Maybe you can hold the chair, place yourself next to a wall. Just keep yourself safe when you're working on your balance. And try to do a few balance, balancing poses every single day. And then when you've worked both sides, Coming down to the mat, if you're working from the mat, resting the legs on the chair, slide the yoga block under the pelvis, support the head, and enjoy a few breaths of relaxation in your supported inversion. If you're working from the chair. Raise the legs if you can onto another chair. a few more breaths here, really noticing how you're feeling. See if you can experience what is going on in your body right now in terms of the muscles you've been using. Is there that sense that they've been worked? Is there the heat, residual heat still there? Does your heart rate and breathing reflect that? And is everything beginning to slow down as you move towards your relaxation? One of the purposes of yoga in terms of physical practice and the muscular system is to stretch and tense and contract as many muscles in the body as possible in order to keep them healthy, in order to keep them strong enough to do the jobs that we need them to do. But also to focus our awareness on all the muscles we're using and develop 
enough awareness to be able to relax and switch off those muscles when they're not being needed. We really don't want unnecessary tension in the muscles. So make your transition now to relaxation. If you're in a chair and you've got your feet up and you've got a secure chair, that would be a great position to relax in. If your chair doesn't have sides, then, then take the relaxation more as, as a concentration and mindfulness practice. And if you're lying on the mat, Make yourself as comfortable as possible, either in the classic yoga relaxation position, Shavasana, lying on the back with the arms and legs away from the body, the center line of the body going from the hips up to the crown of the head, and just releasing and relaxing the body. So with our focus on the muscular system, we're going to do a very simple relaxation, often taught to beginners, but still effective, even if you've been doing yoga for years, which is to breathe in and tense a muscle or two and breathe out and relax. So we're going to begin with the right foot and you can do as much of this or as little as this as you want. You can keep the leg where it is or you can lift it off the floor or off the mat a little bit if you want to work a little more strongly on the tensing phase of each breath. So take your awareness to the right foot and as you breathe in, squeeze and contract the right foot, curl the toes under and exhale, relax. And still on the right foot, take the foot the other way, spread the toes, pull the toes back, tense the right foot and exhale, relax. Think about the lower right leg, contract the muscles, pull the toes back to tense the front of the shin and point the whole of the foot away to tense the calf muscles and relax. Inhale, engage the front thigh muscle, doing that by straightening the leg, maybe lifting it slightly for a stronger experience. Exhale, relax. Now breathe in, tense the whole of the right leg, leave it where it is or lift it slightly off the mat and exhale, Allow the whole of the right leg to soften and relax. Notice the sensations in the right leg. Compare them to the left leg. And then bring your awareness to the left foot. Inhale. Squeeze the toes under. Tense the left foot. Exhale, relax. Inhale, spread the bones of the foot, pull the toes back open and spread the toes. Exhale, relax. Think about the lower leg, point the toes away. Exhale, relax. Inhale, pull the foot back, stretch the calf muscles. Exhale, Relax. Focus on the left thigh. Inhale, engage the quad muscle. Lift the leg if you want to. Exhale, relax. And in, inhale, tense all the muscles of the left leg and foot. And exhale, relax. Allow the whole of the left leg 
to soften, notice the sensations, compare them with the right leg. And now we're going to move our awareness to the hips and the pelvic floor. As you breathe in, squeeze and tighten the glute muscles. Feel the pelvis lifting slightly and exhale, soften. Inhale, try to just draw up the pelvic floor. Less glutes, more internal, more deeper muscles. Exhale, relax. And once more pelvic floor, inhale. And exhale, relax. Awareness to the abdomen, breathing in, allow the abdomen to be soft. And exhale, draw the tummy muscles back towards the spine. Inhale, let the abdomen soften. And exhale, allow the abdomen to relax. Awareness to the upper chest as you breathe in, slightly press the shoulder blades down into the floor if you're lying on the back or towards the chair if you're in the chair. And exhale, soften. Let's do that once more. Inhale, draw the shoulders back, press the shoulder blades back behind you. And exhale, soften. Awareness to the right hand, make a fist, tense the right hand, relax. Inhale, spread the fingers, open the palm, stretch the palm, exhale, relax. Inhale, straighten the arm, extend the elbow, exhale, soften. Inhale, contract the muscles of the upper arm, lift the arm slightly off the floor if you can, and exhale, soften. Notice the sensations in the right arm. Compare the sensations with the left arm. Focusing on the left hand, inhale, make your fist. Exhale, soften. Inhale, extend the fingers and the palm. Exhale, soften. Inhale, extend the elbow, tense the forearm. Exhale, soften. Inhale, tense the upper arm. Lift the arm off the ground if you want to. Exhale, soften. Awareness to the shoulders. Inhale, draw the shoulders up towards the ears. Exhale, draw the shoulders down. Inhale, draw the shoulders forwards. Exhale, draw the shoulders back. Press them towards the back of the chair or the ground. Inhale and exhale. Soften the shoulders. Awareness to the face. Inhale, squeeze and tighten all the muscles of the face. Squeeze the eyes, squeeze the jaw. And exhale, soften, relax the eyes. Relax the jaw. Relax the tongue in the mouth. Allow the whole of your body to soften. Allow as many of your skeletal muscles to relax, to recover, to be in that softness where they can be nourished and restored, ready for the next time that you need them.
And now allow your breath to deepen and bring movement back into the body. Wriggle the fingers, move the toes, stretch into your arms and legs in any way that feels good. And if you're lying on the mat with your legs straight, bend the knees, roll onto your side, take a breath or two there and then come back up to sitting. I hope everybody is feeling good, that they've had a good workout for their muscular system. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.